Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking to you about variable neutral density filters or VND filters. I will be looking at the newer true color VND. We're going to be reviewing it, going to be checking it out and seeing how good this filter is. I will also be looking at what are VND filters, how do they work, why should you have one, and more importantly, what are the things that you need to look out for when you're buying your VND filter. So, uh, come on, let's get into it and I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. So let's unbox the newer True Color VND filter. Now, before I go any further, I have to say, this is actually my second time unboxing this filter because I made a bit of a mistake the first time I did it, which was only five minutes ago. I thought my external recorder was recording and it wasn't. So this is my second time unboxing this, but just, just pretend it's the first time, okay? So I'll just pretend to cut the tape, all right? Beautiful. We'll open it out and we'll see what we get inside. So, Firstly, we have a cleaning cloth. I'll just get rid of the box. So we have a cleaning cloth, nice little touch. Secondly, we have a plastic protective case and the VND filter inside. So open it out along. This is the newer True Color VND filter itself. Now, one of the first things I noticed about this VND filter is there is a bit of resistance when you're actually going to turn or adjust the VND filter itself, which is something I really like because the last thing you want to have when you're out running and gunning and shooting is to accidentally adjust the VND filter just by your hand grazing it or something. That's not going to happen with this one. So that, that's a bit of a positive straight away. And it also feels really smooth too as well when you're adjusting it. So I like that. Now, before we go any further, I have two things I want to say here. The first is this video is broken into chapters. So if you want to look at color neutrality, sharpness, all that sort of stuff, then please do feel free to skip forward to that section. The other thing I want to say is, yes, that Newer did actually send this product out or this VND filter out for this review. But this video is not sponsored by Newer. They've had no insight or no input into the video itself. And they have not seen this video before it was actually published. So Kieran, what is a VND filter? Well, a VND filter is basically two polarizing filters stacked on top of each other, working in opposite directions. So as you turn it, one filter is rotating against the other one and the polarization effect of those two filters are combining to block light. So the more you turn it, the more resistance you're going to give to light. Now this VND filter is a one to five stop VND filter. So the maximum effect it's going to have is five stops on your image or on your video. Now this brings us to why would you use a VND filter? VND filters are incredibly common and absolutely fantastic for videography and cinematography. For the simple reason being is if you want to be able to adjust your footage on the fly and incredibly quickly, you can pop on your VND filter and adjust it for when you're shooting inside or for when you're shooting outside. Or if you're shooting in changing light conditions, you can keep your shutter speed at the correct setting, you can keep your aperture at the correct setting and keep your ISO under control too as well and just adjust the VND filter to correct your exposure. So they're fantastic for anyone who's into videography, cinematography, or also if you like shooting long exposures. So what are the first things that you need to look for when you're buying a VND filter? Well, there's two things I'd always recommend people to look for when purchasing a VND filter. The first is color neutrality. Because the fact you're using two CPLs or two circular polarizing filters, you can actually develop sort of a color cast or a color tint on your images by using two CPLs, depending on the quality of the CPLs, of course. So color neutrality is one of the first things I'd always recommend you look for in any form of filter. Now I'm going to be getting into color neutrality in detail and really testing this filter properly in a couple of minutes. But before we get to that, the second thing then is the dreaded X pattern. So what is an X pattern and how does it show up in an image? Well, with a CPL filter, obviously it's polarizing your light. So if you're using two together, you can get 
sort of interaction between the polarizing filters and you'll get an X pattern or a dark X showing up on screen, which is something that's impossible to remove really as such in post-processing. So it's going to ruin your photograph and it's going to ruin your video footage. So it's vitally important that your VND filter doesn't display that X pattern. And it usually happens when you go to extremes on the filter itself. Again, I'm going to test that too as well in a couple of minutes. But first, let's have a look at color neutrality. So what I have here now is I have my camera, I have my VND filter, and I have my color chart. Okay, so I just set up my camera here now and I have it recording the color chart. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how a VND filter actually works. So I'm going to just basically screw this on. It'll be two seconds. Okay, so looking through the camera here now, I'm going to show it up on screen. When I adjust the VND filter, you can see it's going to darken the image. So that is full effect. So there is five stops of a light reduction on there now. And then when I pull it back along again, it brings it back to one stop of light reduction. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to pop the camera on auto ISO. So it's automatically going to correct the ISO. So it's going to make up for that light level difference between when I put the VND filter on and take it off. So my camera is an auto ISO now. So it should kind of roughly correct the image when I, take the when I put the filter on and when I take it off. So the filter is on now at the moment and it's at one stop reduction. So what I'm going to do is just remove the filter now. So this is the filter on and that's the filter off. That's the filter on again and that's the filter off. Filter on again and that's the filter off. Now, I actually can see the effects here on myself at the moment and I haven't looked at it as of yet. So it's going to be really interesting from my point of view to see how much of a difference there is to as well in a minute. So now I've put the V and D filter on full strength. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it on and off and we'll see if there's any more of a color cast with the V and D filter on full strength. So that's without the VND filter there now. And now popping the VND filter just in front of the lens again, just to see. And taking the VND filter away again. And popping it back in place. So I'm just after looking back at the results there now, even with the VND filter on full strength and taking it on and off, there seems to be practically no color cast. Again, I'm going to have a really good look at this when I'm editing and I'm probably going to comment down below or somewhere at just saying if there is a color cast or if I could see one or if I couldn't. But as of right now and looking on the back of the camera, that looks perfect to me. That looks incredibly good. So in all fairness, Newer, definitely 100% passed that test. So the next question is, can we check out that dreaded X pattern and is that something that's going to show up? So here I have my camera set up there now. I'm firing straight at a light here now at the moment to give me a completely white background. It's not overexposed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my VND filter, just make sure it's on its weakest setting, and I'm going to screw that in place. Give me two seconds. And once that's in place there now, so I'm going to have a look at the back. No sign of an X pattern here now, and then just pull that down so it's going to give you boom there we go and let the ISO pop back up along again no X pattern showing up and what I'm going to do is just pull that all the way back to one stop of light reduction again the exposure is going to be kind of messing around here a small bit because I am varying the output and I'm actually not even looking at the exposure what I'm looking for here is to see is there any patterns showing up and there aren't so it's after passing that dreaded X pattern effect too as well. So there's a few other quick little things I just wanted to mention about the newer True Color VND filter. The first is I love that little red tab up on top. It is so easy to move with your thumb and it sticks out too as well. So you can quite clearly see it. It's quite a bright color, lovely contrast between that and the camera body itself. So when you're behind and you're shooting, you can just quickly grab it and with your thumb and one handed, you can move that up and down very confidently. And again, even the throw ratio is less than about 90 degrees. It's probably about 75 degrees or something going from five stops of light reduction all the way up to one stop of light reduction. So that's really nice and really handy. 
The other thing, as I mentioned before, is the resistance. There is a bit of resistance in turning this, but it is beautifully smooth. I personally like a bit of resistance in a VND filter because it prevents you from accidentally bumping it. So it provides a, a bit of more of a fluid effect too as well when you're changing from different strengths in your VND filter. Now, the other thing I haven't mentioned as of yet is price. And yes, it is usually one of the first things I will mention in a review, how good the price is, or if it's too expensive or if it's too cheap. But because of the fact that I'm doing this live and I didn't actually know the results until this moment in time, I didn't want to discuss price because obviously performance has a massive bearing on that. So color neutrality being brilliant, that's a huge plus. No dreaded X pattern, sharpness and everything being really good in the two as well. And the price at $71, is incredibly good for such a good quality VND filter. Now, the other thing with that is newer, farthest review have it given me a discount code too as well. I'm gonna leave that in the description down below because it changes from time to time and I'll update it whenever it does change. But as of right now, there's a 21% reduction on their website, farthest filter. As I say, if that changes, I'll leave that down below too as well. So for that money, this VND filter is incredibly good. This should genuinely probably at least two or three times the price it is. It's as simple as that. It feels like a premium product, it behaves like a premium product, but you're buying it at an incredibly cheap price. So well done, Newer. This may not have an X pattern, but it definitely has an X factor. So thanks again for watching. I hope this video helped you out a small bit. And if you have a VND filter that you say you absolutely love, please do let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, and I might even get around to reviewing it. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Mind yourselves, and see you out there.